Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat, but for today's video, I'd like you to call me Professor X. Yes, you heard that right. Well, mm -hmm. Not for that reason. I'm not going to teach you unleash your superpowers or whatnot. But for today's video, I'm going to be your teacher and I'm going to teach subjects related to or matters or topics related to English. Topics that would help you improve your communication skills and eventually help you improve your confidence level. All right. Now let's start with the most basic part of English grammar. So for today's video, we will focus on subject verb agreement rules. Now there are plenty of rules that you can see on the internet, but we're going to talk about just probably 20 of them. I'm going to do a four part video for subject verb agreement rule so that you will not be bored. And I'd like it to be more interesting and interactive as much as possible, okay? So let's get started. Subject verb agreement. Now, I'd like you to remember the general rule. So what is this general rule? The general rule is the subject and the verb of a sentence must agree. So what do you mean by this? A singular subject must have a singular verb, all right? And a plural subject must have a plural verb, okay? But I'd like you to remember one thing. You have to look for the real subject in the sentence. Why? Because sometimes there are nouns that may look like the subject and might confuse you, okay? So you have to look for the real subject before choosing the correct verb. Now let's make this interesting and interactive. So what I'd like you to do is to get a pen and paper and I'd like you to choose the correct verb for every sentence that I'm going to post here before I explain the rules, all right? So do you have the pen and paper with you? Okay, so let's start. First sentence, the dog growl growls when he is angry. So what do you think is the correct verb for this sentence? I'll count one to five. Five, four, three, two, one, time is up. So what do you think is the correct verb? The correct verb is growls, right? So what is the real subject in this sentence? The real subject is the dog, and dog is a singular subject. Therefore, the verb should be singular as well. And a singular verb has an S, all right? Remember that a singular verb has an S. Therefore, the correct answer is growls. So rule number one, Subjects and verbs must agree in numbers. So dog is singular, growls is the correct answer. Rule number one. Let's have sentence number two. The language coach, as well as the team leaders, has have submitted a report. So what do you think is the correct verb? Is it has or has? Five, four, Three, two, one, time is up. So the correct verb is, it's has. Why? So why is it has, not have? Now the explanation is, this is what we call rule number two, intervening words. So what are intervening words? Th these are along with, together with, as well as, in addition to, like, except, these intervening words do not affect the verb. So in this sense, the intervening words here as well as, right? And the noun that is attached to the intervening words is leaders, right? So this should not be the real subject. And the real subject should be language coach. And language coach is singular. Therefore, the verb is has, all right? Okay, that's rule number two, intervening words. Next, the colors of the rainbow is, are, beautiful. Wow. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. So what do you think is the correct verb for this sentence? Is it is or are? The correct answer is are. Why? Isn't it the subject rainbow? No, the real subject there is the word colors. And colors 
is plural, therefore our verb should be plural as well, which is are. So this is what we call rule number three. These are prepositional phrases. Okay, so prepositional phrases between the subject and verb usually do not affect the agreement. So in this case, the preposition here is of, and the rainbow of the rainbow is an example of prepositional phrase. This one is not the subject of the sentence. So therefore, colors is the real subject and are should be the answer. Okay? Next, neither the agents nor Mr. Santos know, knows about the news. So which one is the correct verb? Is it no or knows? Five, four, three, two, one, time is up. So the correct verb is knows. We learned that if the verb ends with an S, it is a singular verb, right? So meaning to say agents is not the correct or the real subject. It is Mr. Santos. Now, how does this happen? What is the rule for this? So this is rule number four. Now, when compound subjects are joined by either or, neither nor, and not only but also, the verb must agree with the subject that is closest to the verb. Okay? So what do you mean by this? Mr. Santos is the closest subject to the verb. Therefore, Mr. Santos is the real subject. Okay? So this is an example of proximity rule. So whatever is closest to the verb is the real subject. In this case, the one that's closest is Mr. Santos and it's singular. Therefore, the verb should be singular as well, which is knows. All right? So how about this sentence? Neither of his brothers is our kind. Does the previous rule apply to this sentence? Let's find out. So what do you think is the answer? Five, four, three, two, one, time is up. Okay, the correct answer is, is, right? So neither of his brothers is our kind. Oh, what happened now? The closest to the verb is the subject brothers. Why is it singular? The rule is, neither means not one, therefore, it requires a singular verb, okay? So the same thing applies with either. Okay? Either of us is, are going to the party. So obviously the answer is, is, right? Okay, again, either, neither. If they stand alone, then they take the singular verb. Like I said, when compound subjects are joined by either or, neither nor, and not only, but also, that is the time that we apply the rule of proximity. Okay, let's have other examples. None is are left of the pie. Second sentence, none is are left of the candles. So what do you think is the correct verb for the two sentences? Okay, so let's have number one. None is are left of the pie. The correct answer is, is. None is are left of the candles. The correct verb is are. Why? What is the real subject here? Okay, for sentence number one, the real subject is pie. And pie is singular and the verb is singular. For the second sentence, the real subject is candles and candles is plural. Therefore, your verb should be in plural form, which is are. You have to remember this, none can either be singular or plural depending on the subject. So none is not the subject. So there is a subject that you can see in the sentence and that's normally found at the end of the sentence. All right? Okay. Let's have another rule. The trainers, not the manager, check checks your attendance. I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, time is up. So what do you think is the correct verb for the sentence? Is it check or checks? The correct answer is check. So it's plural. It's a plural verb. 
So what is the real subject here? The real subject is trainers, not the manager. So this is rule number five. Rule number five is when both positive and negative subjects are in the same sentence, the verb should take after the positive subject. And the positive subject here is trainers. And the negative subject is manager. How does the word manager become a negative subject? It's because of the word not. All right? So when you see this kind of sentence, you have to look for the positive subject. And the positive subject in this case is trainers and is plural. Therefore, your verb should be plural, which is check. Okay? So please watch out for the other videos that I'll be uploading related to subject verb agreement. Of course, we just discussed today five rules and there are still 15 rules to go. Okay, thank you so much for watching. It's very interesting to know how many points you got for today's exercise. So I'd like you to comment your score down below and uh, make sure also to give suggestions or if you have questions related to subject verb agreement, you can write, write it in a comment down below so that I could answer it in the next video. Thank you very much for watching this video and don't forget to hit the notification bell and don't forget to share it and like this video as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching again. Bye-bye.